Culture and practice, how we use language to include or exclude ourselves. Trousers, pants, ducks. Three very different words used to describe a piece of clothing that covers each leg separately from waist to ankle. And with a bit of world knowledge, the word used tells you if the speaker comes from the UK, the US, or Australia. This shows us that language is spoken differently in different regions. Or, in linguistic terms, languages, or more precisely, individual natural languages such as English, develop different varieties. Varieties can be defined by a geographical area, in which case we often call them dialects. And if the geographical areas are distant enough, these varieties can even develop into standard varieties, such as North American English and British English. But geography isn't the only means by which a variety can develop. A variety can develop whenever a community forms and differentiates itself from others. For instance, young people speak differently from older people, educated people differently from less educated, experts differently from lay people, or those in the legal profession differently from those in the medical profession. This is why every language has varieties, such as slang, academic language, jargon, and colloquialisms. Speech communities are formed by those people who use a language in a similar manner. In specific terms, Members of a speech community share similar practices of giving meaning to their experiences through language. In general terms, members of a culture share similar practices of how to do things in a way that works and gives meaning to their community. For this reason, our activities in general, and our language usage in particular, are a reflection of our community and its culture. So, trousers sounds like British English, chill out like slang, a minuet like academic language, and proteolysis like scientific jargon. When you speak like this, you show that you are familiar with the language and culture and are therefore a part of it. We learn varieties primarily by moving in the respective communities and experiencing their culture. If we extend this further, People who move around in the world become familiar with different communities, cultures, and languages. And they are therefore also aware of the impact of language and use it accordingly. Academic language can demonstrate expertise and create distance. Colloquialisms and dialects can establish proximity while a southern drawl with its inclusive y'all sounds laid back and friendly. The received pronunciation of the Queen's English can sound more educated, privileged, and perhaps even snobbish. Choosing the appropriate language can bring people together, or it can exclude them. So if you walk into a Texan clothing store with its cowboy hats and boots and ask for a pair of trousers, you might be met with a surprised, perhaps even bewildered expression. The ability to use a broad repertoire of varieties in an appropriate manner is therefore a key communication skill. This is especially the case for the linguistic style, that is, the ability to find the right tone within a variety. We often say that clothes make a person. For language, we could say that words make a person. You could also express this as the choice of Lexus implies social status. While the latter expression is like a bespoke dress shirt with a Windsor collar and double cuffs from London's Seville Row, the first expression is more like a high street pair of trousers, ready to wear, but just as suitable for the occasion. Trousers. Not slacks or dacks, not dockers, and certainly not knickerbockers. These variants in slang don't stand a chance in English academic language. Or, in more colloquial terms, don't get caught with your pants down by using the wrong term.